What's going on everybody, my name is Aiden and welcome back to another video. Ladies and gentlemen, after a very big couple of days when it comes to the Chicago Bulls and Josh Giddy and everybody wanting to make content and videos based on that, there is still a few questions that you guys have asked me that I want to answer as quickly as I can. And one of them is the five mistakes we have made since we let go or traded for Jimmy Butler. Now, this is, again, a very short time span considering Bulls history, and it's going to be more of a hindsight video. Hindsight is a beautiful thing. What we thought weren't mistakes all the way back then could potentially show, as of now, to be very big mistakes. So there's five mistakes that I want to list, and ultimately, let me know in the comments below if you believe that these five are the biggest five mistakes we have made, or if there's others that I might be missing. But before we get any further, if you like the video, feel free to drop a... Uh, follow and or subscribe if you are new without further ado i feel like it is very important to get started right now so we traded jimmy butler i believe what was it for it was for it was for the seventh pick which turned out to be larry marketing uh chris dunn and i think that was it i don't know if there was someone else that we ended up trading for um zach levine Duh, of course, Zach Levine. But yeah, ultimately, we traded Jimmy Butler for that package. I think it's safe to say that it probably didn't work out that well for the Bulls, considering Larry Markin is no longer here. Chris Dunn is no longer here. Zach Levine is itching to get himself out of Chicago. So yeah, I can completely understand where people are coming from in that regard. But I think the biggest, uh, one of the biggest mistakes in that regard is that we did not extend Larry Markin. And I think this is a big mistake. Now, at the time... Obviously, hindsight, beautiful thing. At that time, I thought it wasn't a mistake for a couple of reasons. Number one, Larry Markkinen's asking price considering how he was kind of mediocre for the Bulls at the time. And, you know, he was asking for, I think, over $20 million, which the Bulls didn't want to pay. I think we ended up, uh, he ended up going to the Cavs for $16 million per season. I think hindsight would have shown that was probably a deal worth giving to Larry Markkinen. As you can see what he's become now with the right place and with the right system, with the right players around him, the right coaching stuff around him, he's turned into a pretty decent player, one of the best that the Utah Jazz have to offer, and to, not to mention last year he was an all-star. So I do feel like we, reg we probably made a mistake in that department. I mean, we ended up getting Derek Jones Jr. from a sign-and-trade situation that involved Larry Markkinen. We got a pick in there as well. Both Derek Jones Jr. isn't here. I don't even know what's happened to that pick, who that turned out to be. But I think we lost that trade, and ultimately, we probably should have kept Larry Markkinen around. So that's the big, one of the biggest mistakes I think we have made since getting rid of Jimmy Butler for Larry Markkinen, Zach Levine, and the rest. But moving into the second thing, ladies and gentlemen, and that is hiring Billy Donovan. Now, again, hindsight's a beautiful thing. And the beautiful thing about this video is that you can go and watch what I was saying about Billy Donovan when we signed him. You can go and watch what I was saying about Larry Markin and when we got rid of him. The videos are there. So my opinions, they're there. I can't fabricate them. I can't change them, pretend like it never happened or whatever the case may be because the proof is in the pudding and the pudding is on the channel. And it's as simple as it gets. So what I was thinking about Billy Donovan was it probably wasn't my first choice, but I really did like the acquisition of Billy Donovan. I thought he would have been someone that could have helped the young players because of that situation where he had Chris Paul, sure. But the rest of that team was extremely young. They ended up getting to the playoffs. He won Coach of the Year. I really liked the acquisition of Billy Donovan. And then things started to happen. Trades started to happen, whatever the case may be. Ultimately, I feel as of now that signing Billy Donovan on as the head coach was the wrong choice for the Bulls to make. And I think even Billy Donovan might secretly feel this because I'm pretty sure he was scheduled to have a break after the OKC Thunder, um, I guess, team. He, he mutually... I guess, agreed to leave that team. He was going to take a break, and the Bulls just ran right in there to try to get the job done, and they ultimately got the job done. They signed on. Billy Donovan, he, I believe, has a couple more years left on his deal, and right now, we are also heading into a potential direction of rebuilding and going younger and tanking, and I think that was a big reason why Billy Donovan wanted to leave the OKC Thunder as well, because of the lack of, I guess, competitiveness they may have, especially when they got rid of Chris Paul. So, I feel that this was a mistake because we didn't really get anywhere close to competing, which is probably what Billy Donovan wanted to do. And now we're in a rebuilding situation, probably heading in that direction. 
and Billy Donovan didn't want to be part of that rebuilding team in OKC. Not to mention the rotations and the minutes and, and everything in between. The actual coaching side of the game has been very, very disastrous as well. I think this is a pretty obvious one. Um, hiring Billy Donovan, I think, has been a mistake for the Chicago Bulls. But moving into, I think, of a more controversial mistake. And that is trading for Nikola Vucevic. I think that turned out to be a mistake. And because of this mistake, a couple of things happened. So the obvious answer to why trading Nikola Vucevic was a mistake is the picks that we had to give to the Orlando Magic. Both picks, one of them was Franz Wagner. I'm not saying we were going to draft Franz Wagner, in all honesty, because I don't know what the Bulls were going to do. But if we did, it would have been a heck of a talent to have on this Bulls team. And I believe we, we also had another pick that we had to give to them as well. I don't necessarily know who that turned out to be. But we also got rid of Otto Porter. We got Al Farouk Aminu in that trade, which was pretty much instantly a buyout situation. And it just... It's a bit too much for Nikola Vucevic, who didn't turn out to be the player that we probably thought we were going to get uh, for the Chicago Bulls. It's not that he hasn't had te he hasn't had great seasons. He's had good seasons for the Bulls, just not what I expected. Uh, I thought I, I, I expected a little bit more from Nikola Vucevic, and we just didn't turn out to get that. But some of the more unobvious things... Trading Nikola Vucevic basically ended Larry Markkinen's career with the Chicago Bulls. Because Nikola Vucevic at the time was a center and we were playing Larry Markkinen as a power forward and a center, ultimately Larry Markkinen got shifted to the bench because we had two seven-footers that couldn't play any defense. Um, and that basically ended Larry Markkinen's time, I believe, with the Chicago Bulls. Obviously getting rid of Wendell Carter as well. Now, I don't think Wendell Carter's lit the world on fire with Orlando, but put it this way, he's in a better situation now than he was with the Bulls. He made the playoffs for the first time ever uh, with the Orlando Magic, and they did okay in the first rounds. I think this is a very big mistake, both subconsciously, or I guess not necessarily the things you didn't notice, like potentially ending Larry Markkinen's time with the Bulls, and obviously the things you do notice, the picks that we ended up having to give away that we probably could have desperately needed in this Bulls team right now. And put it this way, if we had those picks and we had that same core unit of Wendell, Lowry, uh, Kobe White, Zach Levine, and Chris Dunn, Granted, it wouldn't have been perfect, you know. Hopefully, we could have got Lonzo Ball and DeMar DeRozan in there at the time. But you would have had the picks as well. It just made more sense. I feel like Nikola Vucevic was a big stumbling block for the Bulls. Moving into number four. Not believing in the young guys. As I kind of mentioned, Larry Markkinen, not believing in him, not believing in Wendell Carter, but even to the extent of not believing in the players that are still here. Bulls fans, some of them, including myself, have very short-term patience. All we can think about is the direct future and not the long-term future. Tunnel vision, if you know what I mean. There were so many people. I would say at least 90% of the Bulls fan base wanted Kobe White to get traded. There was a fair chunk of people that wanted Larry Markman to leave the Chicago Bulls. Barely anybody believed in Wenzel Carter Jr. And you're probably in the same situation right now with guys like Dale and Terry, even Julian Phillips, Ayo Desumu. Some people just don't believe in him. I think the vast majority of people do, but some people don't. So you're in similar situations every single time because you're always getting young players, even Patrick Williams now. And since people don't believe in them, they just want to throw them away. Basically, let's get rid of them and let's go even younger. Let's go and get more people that could do the job. I think we need to start believing in some of the young guys a little bit, especially if we're starting to go younger now with Josh Giddy potentially keeping Patrick Williams, going for significant other trades, you would assume this team will become significantly younger. So this is something that I believe we were doing in the past. We shouldn't be doing now. We need to put some faith in the young guys. And number five, I think the biggest mistake, extending Zach Levine. Now look, the videos are there. I thought extending Zach Levine was a good thing. And I even was okay that it was a max contract. Reason being, I didn't want to lose him for free. I didn't want to lose him for nothing, considering he was our best player. And he re-signed very quickly because the Bulls obviously felt the same way. But no one could have predicted two, three years later, Zach Levine wanted to get traded from the Chicago Bulls, pushing for a trade out of the Chicago Bulls. And no one knew he had a 15% trade kicker in there as well that basically gave him an incentive to leave the Chicago Bulls also. And I think hindsight... If that was going to be the case, we probably should have signed him on a less than a max contract because I doubt there was going to be other teams that would have given him the max. Also, I would have considered maybe even letting him go for free considering 
he's going now for a very low price, most likely. So those are the five mistakes. Do you agree? Let me know. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay tuned for more. Take care, and peace.